Well, welcome to the Sports Entrepreneurs Mastermind, uh, the same way I always say welcome to the Sports Entrepreneurs Podcast. Um, this is my other you know, entertainment here for myself. So today we're talking about bringing live events back to life. Uh, and that's clearly a very important part. Uh, we already touched on it earlier. Um, this is really what, what we as an industry are currently missing. And the way I've looked at it is really a couple of levels. Number one, of course, uh, what can we do now is to first of all get the games back on. I think we've all accepted the fact now that uh, we will not have fans in it. Um, so that is just, I mean, let's say, the, the reality to it. Um, the fans will take some time. So first of all, what is it really? What's, what, what can be done now? Um, and clearly many of the big leagues, for them just to start playing matches again um, and having, having competitions allows them to have television revenue coming back or at least being paid. Uh, the sponsorship money still stays there. And the main thing they're just losing, of course, is the, is the gate receipt. Now, this morning we had someone on the line. Uh, he runs a third division football team in the U.S. Um, now, he has a complete flip-flop. He doesn't have TV revenue. He has probably some sponsorship revenue. But two-thirds of his revenue are at the gate when people come in, you know, spend, buy a hot dog, buy a merchandise, anything else. So he has a big problem, of course, because he, he cannot get people in, right? So we spent the morning session was a really good brainstorming session on just what other ideas could you have, right? Um, so everyone has slightly different challenges here, right? Um, so the way I looked at it really is how, what can we do first to bring live events back as, as now without fans? But partially of really, and, and what I am talking about as well, is uh, talking about how do we then, you know, really bring the fans back in because that's the ultimate trick, right? And, and none of us wants to be here forever um, uh, and watching these games without fans, right? So the focus really is on a bit of both. So we can go in all these directions. So here is a bit the, uh, the, the starting point of this, right? So it's really about protecting your staff, your players and your fans. And so that's where TSA is, you know, spent the last several months now is really looking at what can we do as an organization, even though that's probably not what we traditionally do. But uh, this is really, uh, you know, become a big focus for us. We create our own little logo, you know, which says, you know, beat COVID-19. So here are some interesting statistics, which has really come up fairly recently. And we just put a few things together. Um, and I want to show you one other slide, which unfortunately we didn't have time to put in here. Uh, which someone shared earlier, uh, so I'll jump a bit out and in here. But uh, the, the the not so good part, I think, the in a sense, the scary part of this this uh, this whole uh, discussion here, really is uh, you know how can you know that that the fans aren't you know don't want to come back until there is either some vaccination or you know much more certainty in place again that it's safe to come back. So this is one particular study done by you know, Reuters. Um, luckily, I have some other statistics which are better news. But if we if we take some uh, uh, if we take this a bit as as uh, as sort of one state of play here, uh, this is not the place where we want to be at this point in time. Obviously, right uh, now, again, uh, this statistic here, which comes from a different uh, source, again starts talking about you know what is it what people are looking for to see before they're ready to come back in, right? So. They want to see, you know, cases dramatically declining. That's almost 80 plus percent, right? Very important to somewhat important for them uh, before they would come back to an event. You know, they want to see treatment of the symptoms to become more readily available. Again, vaccination maybe, uh, which we all know is, you know, potentially a long way off uh, before we're going to see any of that. Uh, and of course, you know, testing, you know, in certain areas. So, all those stats aren't very helpful um, to build confidence, right? Now, luckily, the next slide is my, what I always say is my favorite slide um, or a better slide. And that is really, you know, show, you know that, that fans are ready to come back when we do certain, right? And if you see the, li the, 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 the list of things there from as simple as adding hand sanitizers, that means 44% of people are more, much more comfortable. And, and if you add the somewhat comfortable, you know, you get up to 70% now. And so that to me shows again, you know, we as an industry really right now, we have a confidence issue here, right? This is less about people don't want to come back. And I'll show you one more slide after this, which makes that point even more. People do want to come back. Um, they are ready to come back. They, you know, the real serious fans are missing this sport as much as we probably missing it as an industry. 
Um, but there are things which we're not doing right, right away. And that's part of, of course, what we're going to be exploring here and what can we do uh, and how can we learn from some of the people who are doing things already, right? But if you look at it, you know, communicate the venue is sanitized. How hard is that, right? I mean, yes, you would have to sanitize it, but to just to communicate it, right? Having infrared thermostats um, at the entrances, not difficult to do, right? So these are all things we know we can do. And this is to some degree where we as a company are currently focused on, and this is why, you know, we, we're hosting these talks. So, because we want to share that, because I think there are ways we can tackle this without having to make this, overcomplicated, right? You know, there's all these conversation about new technology and, and how we're going to change the whole thing. Why do we need to change the whole thing? Right now, we just need to get these fans back in and build some comfort with them, right? And so I think this is really uh, what this is all about. But I'd love to share one other slide here, which, as I said, unfortunately, is in a uh, different space here. Um, but this gives this one I love, right? It says 94% claim very they miss sports very much and the live event part of it, right? Right? And the majority saying, look, you know, we miss it so much because of all these different reasons. And 76 saying, look, we are extremely and very likely once this thing gets back and once we're allowed back, that we're going to come back as well. Right. And so to me, those are very powerful statistics. This particular statistic actually, or, or this, this presentation has a lot of really, really good data inside. We shared it already in the Facebook group. Uh, as I said, someone in the earlier call shared it with us and uh, there's a, it, it's, it goes very deep um, and so it's too much info for, for me to go in there now uh, but it's a great uh, there's some great statistics in it uh, and again it's very recent it just was done I think in the last week or so so now what do we do then you know if we now if we know that first of all the fans are scared to come right now and that's scared the, being scared is, is, is the new norm as well right it's because we get bombarded by TV and everything else all day long um, but they are ready to come back. So what can we do to keep them safe and, and make this clearly our number one priority, right? So this was a, an article actually I, I wrote uh, last week for, uh, for a, a sport party publication. I think it comes out next week. And I want to highlight a couple of the points which, which I felt were so important for anyone who's involved in sports in a league level and has some influence over this uh, needs to be looking at. And number one is, of course, that we have a really, it's all about having clear plans and then communicating these plans to a host of stakeholders. And that's sort of what this list is all about, right? So the first plan needs to be obviously that you have a strong screening process for your athletes and for essential personnel. It doesn't work without it, obviously, especially the athlete part. If you can't convince these guys to come on board, uh, you're not gonna have a league, right? Um, and I see a lot of people faltering around there uh, in this particular space. Um, you know, even who is your essential personnel? Who do you really need? Uh, how many folks you need? And therefore, how do, we need, how do you bring them into this whole testing and monitoring process, of course, right? So, uh, you know, the third point about bringing the assets on board, I think, uh, Laura, you, you see that you, I'm sure, read all the stuff in the UK, how certain players there are sort of you know, not really on board uh, with it and they're not sure whether they want to play and, you know, they're worried about it. I, th I think in my case, in my, uh, the way I look at it really is it's a misinformation exercise, right? It's less about not, you know, being really scared of it. I think it's, again, they read a bunch of other stuff and someone really didn't quite inform me at that with the right amount of testing. And because we've been in the last couple of months very much involved in all this equipment as well as these test kits, I can tell you there are plenty of test kits out there and different type of testing there, which will make this extremely safe. It wouldn't be practical for any one of us to do this constantly, but for someone who wants to bring a football league back or, or any other type of competition, uh, if you go through this stringent type of testing between all the different types of tests which are out there, uh, that can be done. Um, and it doesn't even have to cost a lot of money. You know, we are, as I said, we're working with these factories directly out of Japan and, and you know, Korea and China. Uh, which is producing these test kits. Uh, and what you see, unfortunately, what you end up paying when you go to a hospital uh, versus what it really costs uh, is usually, uh, there's a big rip up uh, in this, right? So if you are a leak and you're smart and you do a drill directly with one of those uh, operators uh, or producers, you know, manufacturers of this, um, you can save yourself a ton of money um, and maybe even you create a sponsorship package or other things around it. So this is part of what we're doing right now. We're just educating the industry and saying, guys, you don't, this, don't make this more complicated than it is. Have a plan, get your, you know, get, get your people tested, which really need to be there. 
make sure they understand how this works, make sure they understand how safe this is when you do it uh, and you are ready to go. Now, then comes number point number four, of course, that once you put your own plan together and you get your house together, and I again, I think the Premier League is not a great example there. Um, it doesn't look like they've got their act together right now. Bundesliga is going live in the next few hours here. Today, I think the first matches will be live or maybe it already started. Um, so they are a good example. Now, the league is very clearly set, guys. Look, we are, it's a trial and error. It doesn't mean we, we, will be, we, we will be able to finish the season. If things go wrong, of course, we'll be off the air as quick as everyone else. Um, but that they have done what needs to be, uh, you know, they've put the process together and very obviously have done a great job to work with the government, the German government, as well as the different states in the country to convince them that it is safe to come back out. And that is the real trick here. Um, working closely and now whether you're a small event in some part of the world where it is maybe a local municipality you need to be dealing with I know maybe Francisco he doesn't have to think about the United States government but working of course with Florida or with your municipality there of what can you do I think is really critical right so you can look at that from a smallest level of where you are with your own events to you know the country and of course the states uh, I don't know whether I mentioned it earlier already uh, in this morning, in the afternoon session, we had someone from Australia um, and what they call their sporting coats there, which means, you know, their sporting uh, competitions. They, uh, their biggest problem is the central government has made rules or allowed them to go back on, but each state has a different rule. So you, even though you have a team coming from one state to the other state, the rules are so different that they can't travel and they get stuck. They basically have to quarantine for two weeks to get from one state to the other which obviously doesn't work very well when you try to run a league on a weekly basis, right? And so it is, it's really clearly the, in Australia, as much as uh, the country overall, it looks a whole lot healthier and safer than many others, uh, even they still haven't quite convinced the governments there. So big issue, big, big area, which all of us need to spend a lot of time in there because without the governments, we aren't gonna get these things back on air, right? Now, now it gets a little more complicated if you're on in international events like the UFC, or one championship here in Asia, which has athletes from all over the world. Um, you know, or we had someone earlier from India on, uh, we we're talking about the IPL. You know, the IPL isn't just, you know, Indian players. It's, you know, players from Australia, the top cricketers from England, Bangladesh, you know, Pakistan, you name it, Sri Lanka. So how are you going to get them into the country if you can't, you know, if, if the government doesn't let them in? So very different, you know, it's not just your own government, but it's, of course, embassies and, and, and other regulators which are part of it. Uh, and so those are all things which obviously is something we normally don't really deal with. Yes, you might have to deal with visas to get an athlete into, it, in, into a country, which whenever he comes from, uh, but you don't really deal with this, the other things. So it's a different world for us. It's a different world we need to be all looking at. And, uh, and the key is we have to have a plan. And, and that is where I feel a lot of federations are falling apart. Uh, and the few who have done so far a decent job. Korea has a football league back up. UFC, of course, had an event. Um, and the Bundesliga is kicking off. Um, they've obviously done a better job, and we all need to be paying a lot of attention to it. And the last part, which, again, I think is equally important, is how on earth we're communicating these messages, right? Um, I've seen so many, uh, again, bad examples where clearly the league doesn't get their act together. Too many voices out there. And of course, now we have social media. That means everyone has an has an has an uh, an opinion and shares it, of course, as well, right? So, uh, a strong PR plan and how you are planning to deal with it. Um, and that's interesting. Where I, I was listening to uh, a report on on the Bundesliga yesterday on TV, um, and they're saying that even in Germany, um, there is a large part of the population who still doesn't think it's a good idea. Uh, and it wasn't just football fans; it was, of course, general public as well. So. Uh, even they, I guess, still have work to be done there to figure this out. Um, now, this is sort of um, where we where we now getting into just throwing some ideas around. So it gives us a bit some interesting parts for brainstorming. Um, one thing we've seen here in Asia more probably than in other countries, although I believe UK and a few other places around the world, I'm not sure the US yet, um, is looking at similar tools, and that is, of course, these sort of tracking devices, right? So I'm not talking about whether that is a good idea in the general sense, um, you know, or how it restricts your, you know, freedom and God knows what, whatever, you know, amendments it is in the United States. 
Um, that's, that's the point here. The point is more, these things are out there. Um, I was out this evening uh, grabbing a quick uh, bite before, and uh, the restaurant I was sitting in had its own app or, or had, a, had, had to signed up for this app where I could connect into and I can sort of register um, and then they, you know, they allow to, you know, they can track me in some fashion with, you know, with other people sitting in the restaurant. So this is happening all around the world. Now, my point here really is not so much, you know, this is happening and, and therefore let's just accept it, but how do we take advantage of it, right? How do we as sports, uh, being in the world of sports, work with Federation again to bring this? Because I see an opportunity here. Our fans in the world of sports are already keen they're constantly sharing stuff with us all the time anyway, right? You know, sports fans aren't shy to tell you who they like and, and who they don't like, right? So if they're sharing lots of information with us, why wouldn't they be willing to take and, you know, download an app, which they know is linked to their favorite team, and therefore going back into their stadium would make it safer, that they know the guy next sitting next to you has a green, little green tick as well and might not have a red tick. I would do that, right? I mean, you know, again, if you know you're in a confined environment and you want to know who the people around you sitting there are all been tested and somewhat screened maybe in a similar way. Uh, I think that can all be really helpful. So, and these, again, you know, in China, of course, this was the government. This isn't, uh, you know, someone doing it on their own. This is, uh, you know, from the top down. Um, but like I said, I have now been in touch with companies who built these apps uh, and it can be done for anything. If, if a restaurant group can do it, why wouldn't uh, a sporting code be able to do this, right? Why couldn't the NFL build something for the whole league or, you know, so that all the fans uh, from the different uh, parts of the states uh, would be able to track it and therefore be safe. So this is where I think technology do comes into play um, and can make things a bit easier, right? And we might just sometimes have to think a bit outside of the box, uh, which is along the lines of here of this point as well, uh, this slide, you know, what we call financial arbitration, right? You know, it's actually, it's a fancy word, which basically just means, you know, don't use cash, right? And, and I think, I don't know about you, but lately I try to avoid using cash. I don't like the idea of taking that dollar bill and, or, or giving it and then, and then receiving change, which God knows how many people touched and, you know, what sort of virus sits on this thing. So as every time where I go out, I'm paying with credit card or of course, or, you know, here in Malaysia, you can use uh, your phone now in many places as well. So now, again, that's just a, a habit which is already happening anyway, right? And in China, it's obviously massive and, and a lot, many other Asian countries as well. Um, you know, Disney has this thing called the Disney Magic Band. Why do they do this? Is because they know the more abstract you make the purchase, the less you feel the pinch, right? And anyone who's ever been to a Disney studio or Disney facility, you know, you walk out with your kids and you're a few hundred dollars lighter, right? Because you don't think of it, right? You don't feel it. Uh, and so, again, how do we leverage that into the world of sports? Um, if we now know that people are, uh, you know, willing to use these type of devices more and, and it's becoming even much more the norm again, um, let's use it, right? And, and bring these same techni technologies into the environments once the fans are allowed back in uh, and can take, take advantage of it. So that's where I do think the shift and change of habits are opportunities uh, whether it is tracking folks with data and, of course, having more access to them in other ways as well, but initially also using it as a safety device and, of course, using these other things. Here. Everything is about, at the end of the day, bringing in data, uh, uh, which can be helpful in many other ways, right? So that's a bit that side of it. Um, and I guess, you know, uh, just throwing these out at you so we, we can have a bit of a fun conversation about it afterwards. So. And that's the part here now, uh, what I'm sharing with you is a little bit of some of these other solutions we've found and we've been heavily involved in. Uh, and when I really come close to you know, what you saw in that earlier slide about uh, what are fans looking, looking forward to, right? What are they expecting us as an industry to step up to and clean up in the true sense of the word, our act, right? Um, so it's just, just a few slides uh, and then we're almost there. So, you know, thermal scanners, clearly, you know, whether you go to airports now or whether you're walking into a football stadium, that should be there. Um, it should be the ones where it's, you know, electronic, no touch. Um, you don't have some guy sticking you know, in some sort of, you know, thermostat in your face. Uh, you know, if you try to do that with 50,000 people, it's never going to work, right? So you need proper systems and these are all out there and they don't cost that much. You know, that's the amazing part. You know, the, the sort of equipment you see here, we're talking about a few thousand US dollars, maybe, you know, up to 5,000 US. 
that's nothing, right? If you are a large organization, uh, that's a very, very small commitment to bring your fans back into your stadium and again, show the government that you can take care of that. Uh, absolutely, right? And of course, there are more fancy versions of that, you know, uh, where you can really uh, capture larger audiences, um, you know, in screen where, you know, when, while they're walking around your, your corridors or other things. So again, all this stuff is out there um, and it just needs to be brought into the industry, which obviously is, you know, hasn't happened yet really on a, on a large scale, uh, but that's something we're doing here. Um, and that's my other favorite one is masks. Now, many governments are starting to uh, implement certain, you know, uh, wear masks or at least they, uh, you know, encouraging wearing masks, even in the United States, of course. Um, now, I always see this, the minute I see a mask, I see a massive sponsorship opportunity, branding opportunity. That's just, I guess, my commercial brain starts kicking in. Uh, you know, how you can brand this, whether it's, of course, the brand itself as the sporting brand, uh, or, of course, bringing your sponsors into it, right? So this is actually something we really are doing right now. We're having conversations with football teams in the U.S., um, and, and we'll be reaching out to other groups around the world. Um, and I do see this as not just an opportunity to generate new revenue streams for these clubs uh, and leagues, uh, which they all, I'm sure, would be very happy to look at, but it, is a, it also is something which helps the fans, right? It makes the, the play safer. Um, and it gives a sponsor again an opportunity to participate in, other, in an interesting way. So to me, this is, you know, it's a big, big opportunity, um, you know, from a merchandising point of view. The other side, of course, and again, you know, I'm using these examples just to show how easy it is um, to take care of certain parts of this ecosystem, right? So the frontliners, again, you don't, this is not rocket science, right? You're already seeing it at cashiers now in supermarket and other places. We can do the same thing here, right? We, the, and again, that equipment costs nothing. You know, these gloves are 10, you know, 10 cents, you know, these masks cost, you know, a dollar maybe. Uh, it's all there and can all be done, uh, can be sourced and, and very quickly deployed um, and create an environment where fans and of course the staff are feeling safe to come back in there, right? And if you can show that to government, why would they not let, let these, you know, let us back on, on air in a sense, right? The other one we saw earlier, you know, it was, I think, the first one on the list. Uh, people saying, yeah, you know, just give us some bloody hand sanitizers, right? So, again, it's all there, not difficult to do, um, you know, and for us, uh, for anyone, basically, to put this together. The, this one is an interesting one. This is an actually um, sort of a, an air sanitizer uh, system. Um, and the example, obviously, is from an office environment. So, but it's very easy. You can do this in, in, in for, for indoor stadiums. Uh, where you can have this type of equipment there, uh, which cleans the air. It actually monitors even the air. It's linked to a computer and it can tell you what type of particles are flying around. And therefore on the back of it, it can show, it can, it can change a little bit of what you uh, dispensing. Uh, so again, all those things are there. The technology is there. This is fairly new technology here. This comes out of Switzerland. Um, so, you know, if someone, anyone who does a bit of homework on it will find this stuff and it's there and, and, and you know, it, we, people can help. So this is really what I just wanted to kick it off with that, you know, how do we work together to beat this damn thing? Um, there are many ways of dealing with it. We can look at technology, of course, of how we make the games better. Um, and again, looking at the framing, what I said earlier, how do we first get the game safe now? And there is a certain amount of things we need to be doing. And then, of course, once that is safe and, and the governments are comfortable with that, how do we, of course, make sure we bring the fans back in there, right? And, and so that's really where TSA is spending the last several months on um, just saying, look, guys, we know it's uncertain times that we're all clear about it, but let's see how we can bring some certainty back to your organization uh, and have figuring out how we keep your staff and customers safe. So that's a little bit just to warm it up. Um, and hopefully now I'll throw it a bit more back to you guys.